for this exercise, I'm going to convert a simple critical path method exercise uh, into digital paper. And then we will move now to Project Libre. So I'm going to switch the screens now because I'm also operating uh, another device. And you have here a, an activity listing of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G with the following predecessors. And the predecessor, as earlier discussed, is nothing but a required activity that needs to finish before uh, the next activity can begin. So if you try to take a note at this one, of this one, activity B, for example, can only start if uh, the predecessor A is finished. And so uh, A has to, to consume the four units of time first, and then only after which uh, B can then uh, begin uh, to proceed. Okay, so that's the same logic. And then on the third column, you will also find time estimates for each of the activities in the, uh, in the network. Now, this one is a theoretical set of activities. What it just simply uh, tells you is that the activity listing is, is anything that's part of your um, work breakdown structure and in your Gantt chart. Okay? So, as we already earlier uh, in our previous subjects have taken when we try to draw for example activity a um, activity a has no predecessor so there is nothing that you will see uh, immediately uh, that precedes it no and so if you go now to b so we will just draw b again and then point an arrow from a to b because this particular relationship says that uh, B can only begin if A is done. So I'll just put number 4, which is 4 units of time. And then 7, which is 7 units of time for, for B. Okay? And then you now go to C, D, and E, which requires B to finish. So I will put in C. And then D. And then E. And then I draw an arrow from B to C, and then B to D, and then B to E. And then I attach the time assignments, which is 8, and then 6, and then 9. And so, uh, after C, D, and E uh, have finished, and then I can draw F. So I can draw an arrow from C to F and then D to F, and then E to F. And then I assign 11 there, okay? And so um, you now go from F to G. So I draw G, and then put in an arrow from F to G, and then there is an assignment of eight units of time. Okay, so that's the network. Now what we wanna do is now compute for uh, the critical path. And how do we do this? Okay, so when we compute for the critical path, we actually try to solve all the possible uh, routes from A to G. And so one way to look at it is to move from left to right, then top to bottom. So we have uh, A plus B and then C and then F, and then, uh, then G. Okay. And then you just attach the numbers there. So that's 4 plus 7, and then plus 8, plus 11, plus 8. Okay. And then next is A, B, D, F, G. So that's 4 plus 7 plus 6. And then you have 11 and then 8. So 
Okay? Then the third one is ABE. And then FG. So that's 4 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 8. Now, so if you try to total these three, so let's just change the colors. Okay. So this one is, uh, let's look at ABCFG. That's 11 plus 8. So this one is 19 plus 11. That's 30. Uh, this one is 38. Okay. And then 4 plus 7 is 11 plus 6. That's uh, 17. Plus 11 is 28. And then 8. Add 8, that's 36. All right. And then 4 plus 7 is 11 plus 9 is 20. Plus 11. That's 31 plus 8 is 39. Okay. So let me see. Let's double check. Let's use a calculator. So that's 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 11 plus 8. 38, that's correct. And then 4 plus... Okay. 4 plus 7 plus 6 plus 11 plus 8, 36. That's correct. And then 4 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 8. And my math is still okay. So, uh, as we said, uh, the critical path is actually the longest, the longest path. So, why is it critical? Um, technically speaking, it's the longest line. And what that happens, what happens there is that these activities, all right, so let's draw this. It's A, B, E, F, G, A, B, E, then F, then G. These are the critical paths. So what does that mean? This is the longest line in the network. Meaning, uh, if you are the project manager, what you should do is to defend at all costs so that A, B, E, F, and G do not become late okay. do not finish uh, late why does that why is that important because if a b e f and g are late then the rest of the project is going to be late as well okay so what are some of the implications here okay perhaps uh in in, in negotiations uh what you can do is you take a look at 38 and 39 a b c f g there's a there's a difference of one here. And this is what you call your slack. Okay. And then A, B, D, F, G, there's uh, 36 here. So uh, for this one, there's uh, an allowance or a slack of three. Meaning uh, the project manager here can actually allow for some slippages in activities C and D. Number two. Uh, very important also to understand that A, B, E, F, and G, uh, per, per experience, you can put in your best guys there or best resources, second most talented. You can bring in your most, uh, most trusted experts. And then at the same time, that is the, those are the set of activities that should be well supported so that they start and then they end on time. And then these are the ones, uh, because they're also critical, make sure that... Uh, in terms of cost and estimates, uh, they are properly supported and computed. Okay, so on the next screen, what we will do is uh, try to uh, transfer this one in Project Libre. And this one is going to be easier because this is like what? Very simple A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's about seven activities, and there's a bit of math there. So imagine if it was uh, a little bit more complicated you'd have a hard time computing for each of them, uh, the critical path uh, as well. So what we'd like to do is try to move this towards um, project management software, and then you can see how easy it is to be able to, to, to convert something like this uh, within minutes.
Okay? So I'll see you on the next uh, on the next recording. Thank you.